Hi, my name is Antonis and I'm an iconographer and a painter. Today I want to share with you some thoughts on painting uh, realistically a portrait and uh, you will uh, see me painting the face of uh, a young actor from the United States. This painting uh, was a commission by an American director, Taylor Butler. Uh, for a short movie he directed and he asked me to paint the poster for uh, this uh, movie. I will have uh, a link uh, on the description below if you want to check the movie. It's really beautiful, really sensitive. And uh, he asked me specifically to work uh, on the portrait of his actor uh, working with uh, egg tempera here. But on this video I want to talk a little bit more uh, generally and give some uh, tips and uh, um, share some thoughts on how to paint uh, a portrait realistically. And if you are into this, stay with me. Uh, hopefully this will be useful for uh, you. So the first thing I would like to talk uh, about is uh, if you are interested in painting realistically a portrait, you definitely have to uh, to draw, learn how to draw, and uh, spend a lot of time practicing uh, drawing. This is uh, very, very important. Drawing is uh, a process of um, depicting reality, or if you are interested in that, uh, with um, using uh, tones, black and white, a pencil, charcoal, ink, or a medium like that. It is, um, as I said, crucial to, uh, to learn how to draw, to spend time practicing, because uh, most of what's happening while you are drawing, it's also happening when you are uh, painting. It's very similar, then if you master the knowledge and uh, the, the logic, let's say, of uh, drawing, then you will be much uh, a better uh, painter. So, if you are stressed when you are about to paint a portrait uh, uh, realistically, if you are stressed to ask somebody to sit for you, or if you are stressed uh, about um, what you draw, what you paint uh, will be similar, will be like the person that uh, you are to draw or paint, it's uh, better to begin by drawing yourself stand before a mirror or sit before a mirror and um, try to draw what you see on your face in a relaxed uh, very uh, calm uh, way this way you will not be stressed about uh, achieving uh, the likeness of your face it's okay if uh, you don't achieve this at the beginning uh, it's uh, more important for you to understand what you are doing, to understand what you are, uh, what uh, you are uh, really uh, looking at. And uh, this brings me to my uh, second tip, which is to really observe and really understand what you see when you are looking on a face or an object from uh, reality. We tend to, when we have to draw or paint something, we tend to forget what we see or to impose on what we see, um, on the uh, what we see on the object, what we know about the object or the face. For example, if uh, I have to draw or paint an an apple, let's say, I while I'm looking the apple and observing the the. the the apple, I will, uh, I will have the tendency to draw what I know about an apple. Thus, I will simplify a little bit the object. I will um, forget about the individual lines and shapes that I see when I'm looking uh, on the object before me. And I will tend to add my simplifications, my notion of uh, what I know of an apple to be. This happens uh, especially when I have to draw or paint something from a very um, strange point of view, let's say, when I have to paint uh, 
something from an unexpected point of view, a body, let's say human body that uh, um, is reclining uh, in a strange way or is bending uh, low, etc. Then I will have the tendency to change what I see and make it look uh, better according to my notion. This, though, a mistake. We really have to observe and uh, draw or paint really what uh, we see and uh, not what we know there is. This will add some visual richness to our uh, drawing. It will add the individuality, the uniqueness that our object or uh, subject uh, has and uh, not uh, just our notion, our idea of uh, how it should look, uh, which uh, usually is a generalization and um, a symbolic depiction, let's say, of uh, the subject. Now, um, while uh, we are uh, drawing or painting, uh, it's uh, very important to ask um, to have a practical dialogue, an internal practical dialogue, where we ask uh, questions about uh, lines, about uh, what we see, uh, what is the, the character, the dynamic of uh, a specific line that we see, or the shape of something that uh, we see. It's very important to, uh, to have this internal dialogue and um, to uh, try to analyze everything into shapes and uh, lines more than uh, the specific uh, objects that we see in front of us. If uh, I'm having an apple in front of me or a face, I will not uh, ask about the beauty, let's say, or the expression of uh, of the face, the eyes, the eyebrows, but more I will ask myself about uh, which lines uh, comprise uh, the, the eyebrows, which eyes uh, uh, shape, make the, the eyes, and what is the dynamic, the character of these lines, and the shapes of uh, uh, lights and shadows that uh, exist uh, in order to make uh, this uh, specific eye. This way, for me, it will be easier to paint uh, and draw almost uh, anything. Uh, some people, some students uh, tell me that they can't draw cars, for example, they can't draw faces, they can't draw landscapes, or they can only draw hands, but they cannot draw feet, etc. This is because they haven't uh, understood the notion of uh, seeing uh, shapes and uh, lines instead of uh, objects. And um, if you master to uh, look on your subject and instead of seeing uh, skin or uh, hairs or uh, uh, clothes, etc., you manage to see shapes and uh, lines. This is very, very important and it will immensely help you on your drawing skills and uh, on your uh, painting, especially when you paint a face where you have to have... Uh, master your eyes to see these shapes and uh, to to find some uh, tiny little uh, mistakes let's say of these shapes uh, if you master this um, skill you will be best on depicting and acquiring the likeness of uh, the face i hope this makes sense to you it's a really um, um, strange uh, um, for some people to acquire a strange skill, but very, very important for being a great uh, painter. Now, I explain this um, further and in detail on my course in uh, realistic portrait painting uh, on Udemy. I will have a link below. It's um, a long course on how to paint realistically with um, tempera, or it can be applied for acrylics. And um, I follow the, the Renaissance uh, painter Botticelli there and his technique, but uh, I talk a lot about uh, these, uh, how to acquire seeing shapes and uh, how to paint realistically a beautiful uh, uh, painting of a face. <laughs> anyway, now here back to this uh, video and uh, 
on my thoughts on how to paint better uh, portrait, um, I would also suggest to uh, understand uh, what the tones are and how to apply the tones, how to see tones on uh, your subject, on your face, for example, know, understand when you see your subject uh, which is your, uh, which area has the lighter tone, which has, uh, uh, are there any reflections, uh, the strongest lights, where are the strongest lights, uh, see the shapes of these reflections, of these lights, try to understand, and then try to um, spread these tones accordingly, what are your light, uh, your strongest lights and your darkest uh, shadows and um, try to decide how you will uh, uh, draw or paint these uh, shapes, uh, these uh, tones in a way that uh, it will make sense. Um, I often say that uh, our colors uh, are not, do not emit light uh, themselves. Uh, they are just uh, the, our brightest color might be titanium white and our uh, darkest uh, color might be ivory black. So if you have to uh, say paint uh, a face with a reflection of uh, uh, completely white or if you have, okay, let me make it more understood by using another example. If you have to paint, say, a sunset, our colors, uh, we, we don't have lights, we, our colors do not uh, emit any light, so for the brightest color of the sun we might use uh, our titanium white. That means that in order to, um, to paint the shadowy areas of our uh, landscape there, we will have to really uh, make a decision of darkening our tones and uh, and uh, in a way that will make sense, in a way that will um, we will convey the bright, uh, uh, the, how bright the sun is, and in order to do this, we have to shadow, we have to darken everything else in a, accordingly. So this is a concept of uh, tones that you have to understand, and uh, often in uh, painting a face, it's. Uh, uh, many students really are taken away by their um, worries about uh, color, their worries to depict the skin color correctly. I would say that uh, first worry more about uh, the tones, about depicting on face correctly what is bright, what is uh, um, less bright, and uh, um, and uh, try to make these decisions in a way that uh, at the end uh, you will have this uh, uh, realistic uh, result. So again, I do hope that this uh, does make sense to you. Uh, I try to condense this knowledge uh, in a few uh, minutes, but I do hope that uh, um, this makes sense to you. Observe some paintings by the masters and see how they have made these decisions of light and shadow, of shapes of light and shadow in, in a way that does make sense and in a way that uh, truly reveals the adventures of the light on a person's face. It's uh, very revealing to observe uh, how old masters have uh, depicted the realistic portraits. Now, something else that uh, I want to add here is that uh, it's uh, good for you to make uh, a decision uh, about the materials uh, you use. You have to know how uh, the materials behave and make uh, a decision of uh, which material you will use. Are you going to use oil for your, uh, for your portrait painting? Uh, a material that is easier to blend, uh, takes uh, longer to dry, etc. Or are you going to use a water-soluble color like uh, acrylics, like egg tempera? Um, here you see me painting with egg tempera and uh, it's a medium that dries fast but um, gives uh, some nice uh, 
um, texture on the face, uh, some uh, a painterly texture that uh, I find uh, fascinating and uh, very very charming. Uh, it's a matter of uh, what you like, what you think it's uh, best for you. But um, don't just uh, decide by chance what you want to use. Uh, have it be a, a decision uh, of after some thought and uh, after what you after some exper experimentation. You can I would definitely suggest to experiment on these different materials and see what you enjoy the most. Now. <laughs> For my next tip, it's probably the most uh, important and uh, I would say that, uh, of course, uh, as I always say to my students, the most important uh, tip is to spend time practicing. Practice and uh, practice and uh, practice some more. Uh, being in front of your is will be uh, very, very helpful for your progress. And um, I often say to my students that uh, definitely we have to, um, to enjoy the process. It's uh, very basic, but at the same time, being when you have this in internal uh, practical dialogue, asking questions like uh, and compare tones, compare lines, compare the shapes you see to, to each other, uh, this process is, uh, can be tiring, it can be um, wearisome, so it's not always very fun to be in the studio and paint. It's a process that uh, requires a mental uh, focus uh, to be concentrated on what we do. And um, some people think it's just uh, being in the studio, uh, enjoying the process uh, and having fun. Yes, that's great. But um, these people tend to just paint uh, randomly without really knowing what they do and uh, without really um, being able to then critiquing and uh, um, reviewing their own work. That brings me to my next uh, point here, which is to uh, how to review, how to critique uh, your work and uh, how to learn to be your own critic. Um, we often uh, finish a, a painting and uh, we doubt a lot about the painting. We tend to say, oh, this is horrible, mm, this is uh, bad, or on the, uh, on the opposite side, this is amazing, and uh, etc. Um, first, when, we, when you uh, do your critique, make sure that, uh, make sure that uh, the subject is still in front of you and uh, try to do some actual um, uh, try to really see what you have painted reward uh, recognize uh, the strong parts of your uh, work um, be generous with yourself and uh, congratulate yourself for the strong parts of your your work you know what these are and uh, at the same time try to make some thoughts uh, some mental notes on the weaknesses that you might uh, see on your work uh, and uh, uh, what you can improve uh, next time. I would say don't over insist on painting. Uh, if you find that there are some issues that can be improved, then do, do so on your next uh, painting. Leave this painting be and uh, move on. But overall, I would say be rewarding with yourself, be relaxed and uh, sincere with your artwork. Do not over, uh, let's say, uh, do not underestimate yourself so, as painters. And um, also always think that there is more space for improvement, more space to do better. Some students really doubt always about what they do and uh, they tend to really, really suffer in the studio, uh, really um, having a bad time and not enjoying the product of their creativity as they don't really believe that what they do has any value. Uh, when we are painting, we are, uh, you know, we don't uh, search for uh, uh, painting masterpieces. 
uh, we just uh, want to explore, let's say, have uh, the spirit of uh, curiosity, have the spirit of uh, a student and always uh, um, know that there is uh, so much more space for uh, improvement and for doing better. It's uh, good to, to have some doubt. But as a teacher of mine used to say, uh, doubt uh, poisons everything, but uh, kills nothing. So, <clears throat> be a critic of yourself, learn how to do this, and always try for something better uh, next time. <clears throat> One more thing I would uh, like to add here is... Uh, that uh, we live uh, in uh, an era that we can educate ourselves, uh, definitely in painting. There are so many um, courses online or uh, where we live. We can find some teacher that uh, we trust and uh, or we even go to, to a school of uh, painting, of fine arts and learn. Uh, in general, if you have no time or uh, you are um, not interested in uh, an academy of painting, uh, always uh, uh, explore uh, educating yourself with the means that we have today, with uh, on, an online teacher uh, that you trust, that you enjoy his work, uh, that you feel that his critiques are sincere and uh, uh, here to help you, to truly help you, uh, without imposing their own uh, and notions about uh, the subject matter or their own style. Uh, it's good to find uh, a good teacher. You will, uh, the, a good teacher will save you some time. It will uh, give you answers that uh, uh, he might have uh, struggled years to acquire, and this will save you so much time and effort for your um, th- for this ju- journey of uh, creativity and uh, painting. So I want to thank you so much for uh, following me here. Uh, hopefully these tips uh, are a little bit thought-provoking and helpful for you. Um, as I say, you can uh, check this uh, online course on Udemy uh, on realistic portrait painting. Uh, I'm using egg tempera there and I'm sharing my palette and some color theory as well. Uh, see if this is something that might interest you and um, I would say as I said before it's most important uh, to just be in the studio and paint Um, even if you have the best student or learn uh, the best course uh, have the best course in the world um, what makes really a difference is for you to to practice and thus uh, truly uh, have a better knowledge of your uh, materials, understand how they behave and uh, thus how you can uh, make the most out of them. It's really important and uh, I really can't stress enough uh, how uh, how important this is, especially today where we have all these distractions, our uh, internet distractions are uh, always there. So try to make some time, try to concentrate a little bit and see how this will go. Again, it's um, always good to to do this in a relaxed, nice uh, um, way, um, not with the stress of uh, painting the masterpiece of the century (laughs) now, but more with uh, the curiosity of uh, um, a person who wants to explore the adventures of uh, life on uh, a human face or on the objects. So... um, This uh, comes to an end. I hope you'll find this painting uh, interesting. Um, Thank you so much for uh, being here, for trying to understand what I'm talking about. I will be soon with uh, another video. Stay healthy, stay creative and uh, practice, practice, practice. Okay, bye.
Welcome on how to paint a realistic portrait like the old master's course. This course will teach you how to paint a portrait that is of high standards as those painted by the early Renaissance artists. My name is Antonis Kosmadakis and I'm an iconographer and a painter. I have been studying Byzantine, Medieval and Renaissance art since 1992 with degrees on painting from the Athens School of Fine Arts and the San Francisco State University. This course shows the technique of painting a face step by step in the traditional way of the artists of the early Renaissance, using specifically two works by the great Botticelli as our reference. By the end of the course, not only you will be able to understand the principles of using egg tempera as a medium to paint a portrait, but you will also be able to apply these various techniques on other mediums like acrylics and gouache. More than that, you will be given tips on drawing, colors, the pigments and the brushes. If you want to improve your painting skills and use traditional techniques and concepts to enrich your artwork, this is a great course for you. All you need is passion for painting and a willingness to practice on this exciting way of painting like the old masters. So come join me into this course and see how vastly this can inform your artistic vision. Thank you so much, stay creative!